Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is Geography Now, Greece. Well, channel Geography Now. Yeah, Greece, right? One of the biggest and the oldest empires ever, right? Uh, who are creator of a lots of uh, things that we take granted for, I guess, nowadays. Uh, lots of parts of the democracy and things. It's just really sad to see what the state they are in right now uh, with one of the highest debt country in the world. Uh, knowing that one time it was a mighty Greek empire, right? With Athens and everything, right? So, you know, they, they just created lots of things that we're using today. Yeah, so let's see it. Obviously, I'm going to love this, especially the geography part of it, because, uh, you know, Greece has lots of, like, you know, uh, ancient Greece location within it. You know, I, you know there is, uh, you know, lots of places I want to visit, but Greece is one of the top top of that because i love you know all the ancient greek culture right i would love to see all those uh, you know ruins that are still there i guess so yeah let's watch it mm. you're the one that i want you're the one that i want ooh, 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 you're the one that i want you get my reference right you get it i'm so clever right do you get my reference no it's time to learn geography no! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Greece is sometimes seen as like the cradle and birthplace of European civilization and thought. So much of everything you see today has some kind of correlation to Greece. Pretty heavy for a relatively small country in the Balkans, eh? Yeah, let's find out how it all went down. Is it small? It's not that so, small. So let's just jump into it. Greece is located in the southernmost part of the Balkan Peninsula. That's oh, this is all Greece, right? All of this is Greece. How is that small? Stretches into the Ionian, Mediterranean, and Aegean seas, bordered by four countries in the north and east. The country is divided into 13 regions, one autonomous state that we'll talk about later, and the capital Athens, one of the oldest capitals in the world where nearly 40% of the entire population lives. Now, despite the administrative makeup, Greece is generally divided into nine geographic regions. Thrace, Macedonia, not to be confused with this place that we already talked about, Thessaly, Epirus, Central Greece, the Ionian Islands, the Aegean Islands, and Crete. As you can probably tell from its makeup, Greece is one of, if not probably the most, seafaring marine emphasized countries in the world. I mean, they do have the world's largest merchant marine fleet after Japan. And at any given point in Greece, you are no more than 85 miles or 137 kilometers from the sea. Greece has over 2,000 islands, only about 220 of which are inhabited, and about 4,000- Yeah, just playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey gave me that feeling, like holy shit, there's way too much water and sea between places. This uh, Greece has more water in it than land, I guess. Yeah, G and C. Extra islets, keys, and sea rocks. Even the ones that are like right off the coast of Turkey. In fact, the only two significant islands belonging to Turkey in the Aegean are Imbros or Kanachale and Tenedos or Botsjada. Now, keep in mind, the Peloponnesian Peninsula is not an island. It's actually just barely connected by the Corinthian Isthmus in the city of Corinth, which has a huge canal going through it. After independence from the Ottoman times, Greece was very intent on making sure they kept everything in the Aegean. This has historically led to some controversy from Turkey in regards to things like the delimitation of territorial waters, airspace, the executive economic zone, and the militarization of some of the islands. Nonetheless, they've been able to work stuff out, kind of, but some things are still left in a gray zone with the only land dispute they have over these two small scraps of land, the Imia or Kardak Island. Finally, let's talk about the one autonomous state. See this little guy right here, the third finger on the weird monster claw looking peninsula? Well, that peninsula is called Halkidiki and the third finger is Mount Athos. With a population of only about 2,000, Mount Athos or Holy Mountain is interesting because it's an isolated monastic state completely run by monks and priests. Getting in is a little tough. The number of daily visitors is restricted, you have to have a special permit, and you have to be a dude. No women allowed. Although historically some women have either accidentally or intentionally got in, including this former Greek beauty pageant winner. She dressed up as a man and snuck in. The three largest cities are of course Athens, the capital this former Greek beauty pageant winner. She dressed up Oh come on, that's not real. Come on, no way. That, that's the same woman or he's, he's just using some kind of stock photo or something. That is ridiculous. Stuff as a man and snuck in. The three largest cities are, of course, Athens, the capital, Thessaloniki, and Patras. However, the three largest and busiest airports are Athens, Heracleion on Crete, and then Thessaloniki coming in at third. Speaking of Crete, each inhabited island in Greece kind of has its own charm. Of course, there are too many things to list, but a few to consider might be things like Corfu being the most family-friendly island. Delos is known for being the legendary birthplace of Apollo. Skyros and Hydra are kind of like the quiet 
islands where more people use mules than cars. Rhodes once held the Colossus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Cardia once tried to become its own country at one point in time. Naxos and Paros are known for being the windy islands, great for sailing and water sports. Santorini with its ridiculously picturesque cliffside white Ooh. marble villas. And Patmos, the incredibly significant religious site in which Jesus' disciple John was exiled and wrote the book of Revelation. Speaking of which, Greece has more archaeological sites per capita than any other country in the world, only ranks behind a few other countries like Turkey and Mexico in terms of overall sites. Now, we all know Greece is a... Tw well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we know that, right? I mean, you know, all the ancient Greece structures that are still left behind. You know, I still hate that how, how many of them didn't survive. Imagine most of them survived and in one form or another still was there, like, you know, Athena statue and lots of things. It would be so fucking awesome. But yeah tourist hotspot. Like France, more tourists than the entire population of Greece visit Greece every single year. Now we all know about the Acropolis and the Parthenon, but other cool sites that stick out include the Meteora Pillar Cliff Monasteries, the Necromantion of Ephyra, the Oracle of Delphi, St. Theodora's Chapel with Yeah, Oracle of Delphi, the resting place of the obviously Oracle that everybody just went to for advice like, oh, kill your children. That will basically, you know, make sure that you don't go into ruin or some shit like that. They always gave some fucked up advice. Obviously, me being scientific guy, I don't believe in none of that shit, so they just made up shit. Right? Kill your kids, they just said that. No visible evidence of roots, the sculpted face on the shore of Nisi, the Chios former leper colony buildings, the palace of the Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes, and of course, oh. hundreds and hundreds oh. of other sites. There are colony buildings, the palace of the... Palace of the Grand Master of Knights of Rhodes, okay. Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes. Yeah, I saw that, uh, what was that, Saladin video, right? No, Suleiman the Magnificent, sorry, I'm mixing up. Suleiman the Magnificent. Knights of Rhodes, right? A thorn in the Ottoman Empire's, you know, side, I guess. Damn, they were badass, though, right? They, 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 were, they were literally close to the, uh, you know, Ottoman Empire at that point, And the Ottoman Empire couldn't do nothing. And it, they had to really fight bad. And then they won. They let go of the Knights of the Rhodes, basically. And of course, hundreds and hundreds of other sites. There are too many to list, and if you know of any, please write them down in the comments below and share. In the meantime, we gotta get down to the foundations of the country. The land. Volume now, is too low. Greek saying, when God made the world, he took the leftover rocks, threw them behind his shoulder, and that's how Greece was made. I, I kind of paraphrase that a little bit, don't quote me on it. Too late, it's a quote now. Now, Greece is funny because land-wise, they don't... Oh exactly score high on the soil performance index and overland transportation has always been an issue but when you pretty much dominate the maritime trading sector you can kind of turn a semi-arid rock zone into a flourishing agrarian hub and wait till we get to the israel episode they've done quite an interesting i can't job. believe you've been so much money lovers in his people the on the west bank, bank. i don't care what the west the bank, west bank. Talk, about me. talk about the rock first of all the country's about 80 percent mountainous on both the mainland balkan region and the islands two main mountain chains form along the balkan mainland the pindus in the west and the rodopes in the northeast macedonia and thrace regions right around the area where thessaly meets Macedonia, you find Mount Olympus, the tallest mountain in Greece, notable for being the legendary home of the ancient Greek gods. Now, with the exception of small boats and canoes, almost all the rivers in Greece are non-navigable as they are too shallow. Nonetheless, the largest... It'd be so cool of the people who basically scaled Mount Olympus, right? Going on top of the peak and saying, look at that, I made it to heaven or something. Went to, you know, basically, I don't see no Zeus or anybody here. I don't see no Olympians. River Aliakmonos flows through the Pindus Range and eventually empties into the Thermaic Gulf right by the Monster Claw. Also, Trihonida, the largest lake, can be found in the south central Greek region. Beautiful, right? Well, it comes at a cost. Greece is one of the most seismically active countries in the world as it lies on two major tectonic plate zones, the North Anatolian Fault and the Hellenic Trench. This means that although frequent, earthquakes in Greece are relatively mild because they usually have epicenters that are in the sea. Or, you know, Turkey just kind of takes the biggest hit. Greece gets about 250 days of pure sunshine a year. 7% of the world's marble mines are found in Greece. And they're also the third largest olive oil producer. Speaking of which, if you've never had Greek food, you are not allowed to die until you do. Popular dishes like moussaka, spanakopita, the classic classic Greek salad, pita with gyros, the real kind, not that cheap sleazy stuff down on 14th street in which half the meat is made of cornmeal. Nonetheless, agriculture only makes up about 4% of their economic output. Most of the revenue at over 80% comes from tourism and service jobs. Otherwise, some notable spots in nature would be places like- Wait a minute, 80% is tourism, huh? So are they doing anything to, I guess, restore some of the, you know, historical sites since it's 80% of their revenue? I think they are, right? They are, you know, uh, rebuilding Parthenon or something like that. 
like the Vicos Gorge, the Sami Cave in Cephalonia, the Siri E. Culture Blue Eyed Spring, Volcanic Rocks of Lemnos, Neda Waterfalls, Tozar Hot Springs, and so much more. In a nutshell, Greece is like a rocky, rugged, seafaring realm of merchant ships and olives. Could have said that like three minutes ago and skipped this whole segment. Well, on to the next. Winston Churchill once said, Greeks don't fight like heroes. Heroes fight like Greeks. Okay. First of all, Greece has about 11 million people and has one of the highest aging populations in Europe. The vast majority of the country, at about 93%, are made up of ethnic Greeks, and the remaining 7% are mostly made up of other groups like Albanians, Gypsies, and Turks. They use the Type C and F plug outlets, they use the Euro as their currency, although prior to the Euro, they used the Drachma, which was the oldest consistently used currency in the world, and they drive on the yeah. right side of the road. Now, pretty much anyone that is- <laughs> We fucking asked to do, you know, uh, do the exchange, right? Go to a shop and give him some Drachma. Like ancient gurus, it would be so fucking awesome. Ever been to school at around age 12 will know how much Greek history has played a role in the Western world. The history is too long to explain in detail, but in the quickest way I can put this, Minoans, Mycenaeans, tribes and city-states fighting against Persians at Thermopylae, which is where Gerard Butler came in and did this. Alexander the Great ushered in the Macedonian Empire. <coughs> Dude, he was what? Greek. No, he no, was yes, not Greek. He, yes, he, he was, was never Greek. How many times? He... Then there was classical Greece, Roman Greece, Byzantine Greece. Wait Ottoman... minute, is that a discussion whether Alexander the Great was Greek or not? What do you mean by he wasn't Greek? He was Greek. I mean, how, how was he not Greek? In Greece, and then finally a revolution led by this guy in 1821 that started the modern version of Greece that we have today. Thanks to Alexander the Great, multiple regions on three continents experienced some form of Hellenization or the influence of Greek culture and language, and it went all the way down into the Byzantine era. This means at one point in time, even black Africans were speaking Greek, or at least the ancient Koine Greek language. It became so widespread- hey, Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Romans took from the Greek culture, right? And Romans expanded in Africa and everywhere, even in Egypt, so it kind of makes sense. Obviously, even before Rome, Romans. Alexander the Great spread a lot, but Romans also spread to the places where, you know, Alexander the Great didn't go. So basically, Alexander the Great is the reason why lots of Greek culture is spread around the places, right? He literally built Alexandria in uh, Egypt, but then again, there are so many Alexandrias in different places. Read that today almost every language in Europe invokes some kind of Greek origin in certain vocabulary. For example, in English, we have academy, telephone, grammar, and even geography. Not only that... Yeah, Linear B. I mean, Linear B can be traced to, you know, so many other languages. Greek has, in one way or another, been spoken for over 3,000 years, making it possibly the oldest consistently spoken and written language in the world. And the Shang Dynasty. And moving on. We could go on and on talking about Greece's explosively fascinating ancient history enshrined with legend, Myth, wars, warriors, trade, alliances, gods, beasts, Sparta, sculpture, arts, leaders, philosophers, games, and interesting clothing options. Well, that'll take too long, and we gotta get through this episode. About 90% of the people in Greece adhere to Christianity, mostly in the Eastern Orthodox branch, just like many other countries in the Slavic world. If you've ever met a Greek person, you'll know that most of them definitely have a unique way of carrying themselves. Many of you Greek geographies, or as I like to call you, geography Greeks, have told me that the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding is actually kind of a pretty accurate representation of a typical Greek family upbringing. A little exaggerated, but nonetheless not far off. Big families with strong opinionated parents that you do not talk back to. There's always like a weird grandma mumbling something about the Turks, and one of the cousins is probably lighting something on fire as your brother is getting into a fight. But when grandma brings in the souvlaki and moussaka, everyone sits down and it's like a beautiful warm Norman Rockwell painting. At least that's the picture you Geogra Greeks have painted for me. I don't know, how was that? Was that in the ballpark? So anyway, in Greece, voting- <laughs> Come on, stereotypes are, can be widespread, but it cannot be the norm everywhere. Right, so <laughs> basically old times could have been the case, but I highly doubt that's how everyone is in the Greece right now, and everyone how, that's how they act. ...is required by law, as is conscription for men ages 16, yeah, that's right, 16, they get them while they're young, up to 45 for a minimum of <laughs> nine months in service. Many people celebrate name day instead of their birthdays, in which they have a party on the day that pertains to the patron saint that they got their name from. Land is kind of limited, so to save space, many of the dead have their bodies exhumed after five years of being buried, and then the bones are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary. Retirement homes are incredibly rare, as most Greek grandparents typically end up living in their children's homes. Traditional music can be found everywhere, you'll probably hear a lot of lutes, mandolins, and tambourines. Traditional dances are alive and well. They all usually incorporate some kind of group number with fast-paced movements and jumpy actions. Oh, and old guys smoking while playing backgammon. There's always old guys smoking and playing backgammon. Avoid the offensive mutsa hands. And just like we studied in the Estonia episode, Greece has an influx of women. Like, a lot. Somewhere around 60-65% of the population is female. This may or may not be the reason why Greece is also the world's most... How can I put this in a non-crude and vulgar phrasing for our children viewers? Uh, 
Greece is the most hey hey active country in the world. They even beat Brazil. Brazil. Interestingly, really? enough, Greece also has. Damn. Okay, 60-65% women. Uh, that kind of could be because of the wars, World War, World War, World War Two. Who knows? Uh, that's why Russia has similar problem too. Has you know majority of women compared to the men because lots of men died in war. But yeah has the lowest divorce rate in the EU as well. Speaking of that, okay, let's talk about some numbers. Brutal, brutal, sometimes image tarnishing numbers. Let's just address the elephant in the room and get it over with, okay? Yes, Greece is in a little bit of an economic pickle right now. Basically, in a nutshell, back in 2001, Greece joined the EU. Long story short, they misrepresented their financial statements, they entered an IMF and ECB memorandum, and now the current generation is paying for all the fiscally irresponsible actions the previous one made with things like hiked taxes as well as salary and pension cuts. You know, son, Back in my day. Yeah, back in your day, you ruined my day. Greece also has the highest unemployment rate in the EU as well. Yeah, most people will uh, <laughs> most people will go through that kind of conversation in the future with the global warming, basically. Well, lots of places will be, you know, I guess, too bad to live in. Nearly a quarter of the population seeking jobs. Nonetheless, as depressing as that sounds, Greece actually, interestingly enough, has the lowest suicide rate in the EU. Now, before we move on, here are some rapid fire notable contributions Greece has made to the world. Inventions. I mean, of course, it's lower suicide, right? Because <laughs> it's basically so, so, okay, our life is bad right now, economy is bad, right? We are kind of poor. Our maliness can be traced back to Spartans. So, yeah, there you go, cheering up. Like the water mill, alarm clocks, lighthouses, the crane, construction levers, catapults, a crude steam engine, central heating, and technically the first robot concepts like citizenship, early democracy, atom theory, various fields of mathematics like geometry, advancements in disease study and medicine, philosophy, theater, dynamic sculpture and art, written history, trial by jury, and of course, the Olympics. Notable Greeks would probably include Eratosthenes, Leonidas, Pericles, Homer, oh, really? Plutarch, Euripides, Pythagoras, Euclid, Arch <laughs> no one Greeks, I the list might be way too long. Medes and Apollonius, Herodotus, and also Don't say it, don't say it, don't say uh, it. Alexander the Great. No, 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 yes, yes, no. I'm gonna he say is he, not he is Greek. Greek, yes he, he is. is. Modern contemporaries like Konstantinos Karathiadori, who taught Einstein, singer Nana Muscuri, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. Yep, he's actually half Greek. Tommy Lee, Yanni, soccer players, Giorgio Samaras, Giorgios Karayunas, Konstantinos Mitroglu, this crazy guy who ran like a thousand miles in 11 days, Queen Sophia of Spain, and of course, America's Greek sweetheart, John Stamos. Don't even try to get on this list. Okay, friend time. Greece is really old, like, whoa, really old. They've planted so many shifting diplomatic ties throughout the millennia that it's ridiculous. In a nutshell though, they generally get along pretty well with other orthodox countries, mostly in Eastern Europe, as theology and doctrine have always tied them in one way or another. Of those orthodox countries, Serbia is probably hands down the closest childhood friend. Serbians are like the next door neighbor that they grew up with asking if Greece could come out and play ball. Nonetheless, you don't have to be orthodox to roll with Greece. Greeks love the Spanish and Italians almost as much. Each country shares a similar Mediterranean seafaring culture that has historically tied them for thousands of years, although each claim that they have the best olive oil. Greeks have even adopted. I mean, yeah, Byzantine Empire, Roman Empire, they were part of everything, so obviously, you know, yeah. Adopted certain Italian words in their vernacular, like una fazza, una razza, one face, one race. And as mentioned before, Armenia is kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since like the third century AD. Turkey is kind of like the whole Japan South Korea thing, in which historically they've had a lot of drama because, you know, Ottoman times, but they love to visit and piggyback off of each other's cultures. Today, there is virtually no tension between everyday citizens. They've moved on, mostly, and sometimes it's even hard to distinguish a Greek person from a Turk just by looking at them. But make sure you do not make the mistake of mislabeling them. That's a huge no no. When it comes to their best friend though, almost every Geogra Greek told me Cyprus. Many Greeks don't even really see Cyprus as a separate country, but rather just an extension of Greece. They love their little brothers with funny accents and would do anything for them. In conclusion, modern day Greece may only make up about 132,000 square kilometers, but has been the standard source of inspiration for so much of the Western world. The fact is today you can look around and see how much of our modern society has been in some way, shape or form molded by something Greek. Kudos to you, Greece. And by the way, kudos is a Greek word. Stay tuned, Grenada is coming up next. I mean, you know, all the philosopher, philosophers, democracy itself, right? All, all the languages that derives from linear B. Uh, obviously, entire Roman Empire based on Greece, right? They took lots of things from Greece. It's literally the successor to, you know, Greek Empire at the time. So Roman Empire, and obviously from Roman Empire, most of the Europe, Americas, and all the English language, everything kind of derives from that. So yeah, most of the Western culture and lots of cultures around the world can trace something back to Greece. So Greece is pretty fucking important city. That's why in the start of the video I said that it's really sad that they're going through economical issue right now. 
because how you know in ancient Greece how big it was. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't have opinion one way or another, but you know, I don't know. When it comes to Greece and all the things I've studied about Greece, you know, Greece is the one country I'm like, okay, I hope they get, you know, get back on their feet, I guess, economically, because I don't want, I don't want Greek to be in, you know, in ruined shape, I guess. All right, that was uh, Geography Now, Greece, by the channel Geography Now. If you like my Rick's on the phone, like, subscribe. Check out the Rick's Sunday, there's a link in the description. Check out the Castle of Greece, everything cards in here. I'll see you next time.